Kirsch. Um, Mervyn, you were uh, 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 landing in Normandy in June 1944 at Gold Beach. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience over there? Well, it took 14 hours to cross the channel, going at the rate of the slowest boat. I woke up to find, I, slept, I was told to sleep, because it'd be the last time probably I could get some sleep for a while. I uh, woke up, saw the French outline, and that, uh, then I began to get a bit afraid. I realised sort of con what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. But as it happened, um, I wasn't fired at, nobody bothered with me. Uh, the shells were going over overhead both ways, but nobody fired at me at that moment. The Germans had been disrupted completely and they hadn't reorganised yet, so I landed at a convenient time. I mm -hmm. uh, don't think it was all done especially for me, but it happened that way. Um, I landed at, on a beach. I went up a, a ramp up to the left, I remember, to the top of the cliff, uh, where French people, mostly women, old men and children, greeted us with flowers and wine and kisses. I took the kisses and the flowers, but not the wine, in case it was poisoned. And then someone started shooting at us, uh, and the police were calling out, keep moving, keep moving, there's more behind you. Mm -hmm. So I drove off again. I was in, I landed in a, a, a tracked vehicle, like a tank with tracks, a personnel carrier it was called. And I remember I was with a driver I didn't know and we landed. When it got to the top, it was the last I remember driving off from this village, which I think was Le Hamel. I haven't to check that yet. I couldn't get there this year. It was roped off because I had a concert. Um, and I drove off. I came across, um, I was, my, job was to f my job was to find a suitable place for 200, ve 200 men, drivers, and 1,000 vehicles. So I needed a big house, a chateau with grounds. And I found a lovely one. Um, I don't know where it was, but it had HQ 17, uh, sorry, HQ 21 Panzer Division mm -hmm. on it, on the ball outside. And I covered that with our sign, 17 Advanced Ordnance Depot. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the engineers had to go in to get to clear all the booby traps. It took about four hours. Uh, they were in the toilet, in the, in the piano, in books and pens, everything opened, exploded. Mm -hmm. So it took a time while they did that. Mm -hmm. But then just as I finished, I went in, I picked up some German maps with a swastika on it, which was handy, I've still got those. And then an infantry colonel drove up and asked me what I was doing there, I told him. So he said, is your colonel here? I said, no, not yet, to be here in any minute, sir. He said, well, it's not here now. I am. I'm a colonel. You're a private. Get. So I had to drive off. And I cannot remember from then onwards. The next time I, w I remember, I was in a three-ton Bedford lorry mm -hmm. with uh, my colleague who I didn't land with. I don't know where he came from because mm -hmm. I came ahead of our unit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just can't remember what happened then. I remember sleeping under the lorry. I remember digging a nice trench, nice clear ditch, and putting tarpaulin on it for the next night. Um, but I, I never found a place, suitable place. I failed in that completely. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing, the unit was, was with us, mm -hmm. and I followed on. Mm -hmm. So it was stayed in around that area for um, Louvier. The, the local people had dances while, while we were waiting for the breakout. Mm -hmm. That was very nice. I mean, no, I've nice got, got, still got a photograph. Mm -hmm. My wife said I should keep the photograph, mm -hmm. gave me permission. Awesome. But um, no, we were there till the breakout, and then I went through to uh, through France mm -hmm. into Belgium. And then you went up north and from uh, yeah, to Belgium, from Belgium into... Uh, to the Netherlands. To the Netherlands, straight to Nijmegen. It didn't stop. came through here, Eindhoven, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, to Nijmegen. Mm -hmm. I was there about three or four weeks, and then into Germany. Mm -hmm. That was that was the good thing because it changed from the British Liberation Army into the British Army of the Rhine. We mm. stopped liberating, we started occupying, mm. and that was a nice feeling. Mm. And we are here in the Netherlands, uh, 75 years after. Um, what do you remember of your time here? I didn't meet one Dutch person. No. The unit before us was a French Canadian, and they had damaged, ruined. A new, newly built 1939 old age home 
where we were stationed. They've been there first. They ripped out all the woodwork, the win window frames, the doors to make bonfires. And they were apparently firing in the air a lot. I think they were drunk most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the Dutch learned to hide. And when we came, they thought we'd be the same. So they, we didn't see them. They didn't come out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the Germans surrendered in, Holl in Italy. We thought the war was over, mm -hmm. Kesselring. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't over. Mm -hmm. So we didn't see any Dutch people. And now you see more Dutch now people? <laughs> and I see what I've missed. Because <laughs> they're lovely people. Mm -hmm. And um, after Holland, you said you were uh, in Germany. And I crossed into Germany. I went as far as uh, a place called Sella, mm -hmm. C E W -L, L E, uh, which has the oldest salt mines in the world, 40,000 years working. Mm -hmm. uh, there were Polish girls who'd been conscripted, and they were very thin, very ill, covered with sores, underfed. We had to feed them. Uh, but near it was called Bo Boerg and Belsen. Mm -hmm. That had just a few days earlier been liberated. Mm. And people were coming out, those who could walk, were coming out looking for, trying to get to Hanover Station, mm. which is a hub in Germany, mm. railway hub, hoping to meet people mm. they knew or people who knew who was someone who they knew. Uh, that was very moving, I would say two weeks. Mm. Uh, the unit that was to pick me up to take me to Berlin didn't turn up. They didn't know where I was. And I didn't know who the unit was. So after two weeks, I got um, a note saying, will you please come back to invade Japan? Uh -huh. uh, well, it didn't say, will you please? It said, you will. <laughs> they got the wording wrong. Uh -huh. So I, I had to go back. So I got on a train, which was sealed, wooden door sides. There was no light, no, no exposure to the air. It was 36 hours to get to Bruges. When we got off at Bruges, I was told that the war was over the day before. Oh, right. So I was the last one in Europe to know the war was over. Uh -huh. <laughs> I came back to England, the Japanese heard I was coming, they surrendered. Uh, so that was that. Okay. I was sent to Egypt instead for six months. You were, you were in Egypt after, after, the, war. after the war. And yeah. what, did you do, what did you do there? Take charge of all the supplies, all vehicle parts in this case, supplies for the whole of the northeast of Africa and mm -hmm. Persia and Iraq, Iran now. Mm -hmm. And um, we met uh, in London, it was in May, uh, it was the beginning of our tour through Europe, um, and you're here now in, in, in the Netherlands. You do travel a lot uh, to attend events and commemorations. Why is it so important for you to do that? Uh, it is, it's enjoyable, but it's also very moving each time. I, I have been going back to Normandy for about 10 years now, um, this is the third time I've been in Netherlands. Um, Netherlands is more in contact with the people uh, than Normandy. Normandy is people, French people attend, but I don't come in contact with them except to say hello. Um, this, this is lovely as well as uh, very moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we see lots of uh, uh, youngsters uh, at the events. Um, what's the message uh, of the veterans, your message, when you do attend those events uh, to those uh, youngsters? Well, I speak at schools in England, usually 12 to 18 year olds, and, and it's the same message as I see the youngsters here, which is lovely to see. Um, the Roman saying goes back 2,000 years, if you want peace, prepare for war, mm -hmm. always be strong. A bully will never attack a strong person. Be strong and you'll be free. Mm -hmm. And I'll say the same thing here. Mm -hmm. And um, um, you will continue to, to attend those uh, commemorations uh, in, in the future? What's, what's the plan? Well, the plan <laughs> is to live. That's the first plan. Um, yes, I will come back, please God. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, for, for us to travel through Europe and to meet veterans is, a, is, is great. It's an honor to to have your stories on, on video and to spread it to the young generation. So I think on behalf of everyone, uh, thank you for, for your service. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.